Piacere. Uh, I'm Michael Gregory Stevens, uh, the author of King Ezra. In Italian, Re Ezra, which has just been published. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about Ezra Pound and why I wanted to write about him. Pound's one of the most important figures of the modernist movement. He uh, could even be considered the linchpin of modernism uh, in that everybody who seemed to be of importance in the fields of literature, music, art, all had one thing in common, which is that they knew Ezra Pound. In addition to Pound's uh, being such an important figure in the modernist movement, particularly in Paris in the 1920s, he also was uh, a virulent anti-Semite. And this came out when he lived in Rapallo, Italy, he very much became part of the propaganda machine for the Italian fascist of uh, World War II. And uh, he broadcast uh, programs uh, in support of Mussolini in the uh, 1940s. And after the war, the American Occupation Army arrested him for treason, put him in what Pound called the gorilla cage, he was about six feet tall, and the cage was a little bit under six feet. So he was kept outside in Pisa, and uh, then he was deported back to the United States, and he was going to be put on trial for treason. Instead, his friends got him committed to St. Elizabeth's Hospital for the Criminally Insane, and he languished there for about 12 years until people came to their senses and realized that he had served more time in the nut house than he did his entire, uh, if he had done uh, prison time for treason. After he got out, he went back to Italy, uh, Rapallo and Venice became his two places of where he lived. And uh, at the end of his life, Allen Ginsberg was interviewing him in Venice, and he admitted to Ginsberg that his anti-Semitism was a suburban prejudice. So here you have Ezra Pound, uh, a complicated figure. I, I wanted to write about him mainly for his tragic aspects. And the tragedy I, I see is like Oedipus or like King Lear, I see the tragedy is his pride, and his pride is connected with that anti-Semitism. And that, that's the flaw that I see in Ezra Pound. So he's a great figure, like King Lear, and he fell from a great height. And um, the question then becomes, is it possible to love uh, the poems but hate the bigot who wrote them? Uh, and I would say, read the novel, Ray Ezra, and you decide.